Welcome back to the Talk About Purpose podcast. I'm Matthew Huey. I'm Brian Harper. And I'm Frank Curry. And today we're talking about the five love languages. Great. Mm. But before we get started, I want to give a little disclaimer. You'll hear me challenge and oppose some things from this. However, I think every person should read this book and I fully support it. I'm just going to be giving some things that may go against it later on in the podcast. Right. Right. Um, it so. wouldn't be a good podcast if we didn't go against it. <laughs> some kind of controversy yeah. there's nothing nothing to watch Trump. <laughs> yeah, I, feel like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right so in the book it starts off with the love tank brian you haven't really read the book yet right no no okay that'll be great love tank i just don't like a, oh okay just text messages do just you email do you do like audiobooks no no Frank, okay. Frank can't read. No. Frank can't read. <laughs> no, back back see, back when he was in school, you know, back then it was uh they didn't, it was like a, it was like a stones. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Seven and a half months to make an S in stone scriptures. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> it was all optional. Reading yes. was optional for him. Yeah. <laughs> well, anyways, the love tank is where we start. Uh the love tank. You guys familiar with this? Is that no. some type of military equipment? Educate me. Okay, so the love tank is what Dr. Chapman, the author of the book, says you need to get filled by your partner in order to feel... So many dirty things. <laughs> get filled no, by your so partner. I'm getting right now. <laughs> I fill my partner all the time. <laughs> filled my partner last night. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. oh, my God. Uh, she has a different disclaimer. <laughs> you know what? We are not professionals. This is a life any, experience and opinion. Right. right. Still old men. You definitely should still fill your wife. But anyways, it is what you need to fill for them not to go looking for that love somewhere else. <laughs> or not to rebel. So there's supposedly an amount. Now it's not set in stone how much or what it is, but that you're supposed to give them a certain amount of love that they feel longed from the actions you give them from these love languages and that's it's important because if you don't do that then they're going to go looking for it in the wrong places mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. see i think eh, i i get it i do understand that people want to feel you know feel loved like that and if they don't feel it they're going to go look somewhere else but i feel like their moral compass should probably stop them from doing that yeah, you can only but take it, so much. Though. I get it. Yeah, no, I, I understand that. I understand that that, that you know, everybody has like their their limit, you mm -hmm. know. But if you if you ever, I feel like if you ever get to a point where you need to seek attention or seek fulfillment in some other place, then you might as well not even be in that relationship. Well, I don't know. I mean, if you don't know how to love someone the way they want to be loved, that's true. You know, what I mean, that's, that's kind of what the book focuses on. If you're not meeting the needs of your spouse. Right. This is a great tool to figure out how to do that. Right. Okay. Makes sense. Yeah. So after the love tank, they talk about the in love phase. Okay. I put that in air quotes because it's really just infatuation. It's. Oh, the, yeah. Yeah. It's the beginning of your relationship where your partner can't do any wrong. You want to be with them every minute. The honeymoon stage. Yeah. So yeah. The honeymoon stage. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean. You don't even want to fart. No, you know, one everything's of the, great though. Go through that. Yeah. Get, you'll go through that <laughs> stomach pain. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then a couple years later, you take pride in it. Like, right. And then you're throwing <laughs> the cover over her head to give her a Dutch yeah. oven. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Love language. Yeah. Yeah. So it's important to know that infatuation is real and <laughs> it's experienced within the first one to three years of a relationship. What I thought was an amazing quote from his book was, true love cannot begin until infatuation ends. Now, I put infatuation in there because he says in love, but it's infatuation. And I thought that was pretty darn epic. You know? It's actually a good point. Yeah. That is a good point. I was infatuated with my ex for a, a long time. and I don't think I ever actually got to a point where, where I could truly love her. And I don't think, I think it was the same thing with her, you know? Mm -hmm. So, but I mean, I was just three years that were just terrible. So, and it was, I don't think either of us 
you know, we're talking about love languages. I don't think either, either of us ever actually tried to pay attention to the other's, like, love language, like, what they enjoy or what they, you know, to fill up their, you know, their love, what is it, the love tank? Mm-hmm. Yeah. To fill that up. Like, it was just, that's probably not something that ever crossed our minds. How many love languages are there? Five. There's five, five. of them? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's five of them. And the first one is words of affirmation. Second is quality time. Third is receiving gifts. Fourth is acts of service. Fifth is physical touch. Hold on. There's, there is a love language that is receiving gifts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So you feel love when somebody gets you something. Wouldn't mm-hmm. that be like a gold digger? Uh, no, I could be wrong. I don't really know a whole lot about I guess it. So it comes along with if you're a gold digger, you also have to receive those gifts, expect those gifts, and only care okay. about yourself, and only right. use that person to excel yourself. <clears throat> so it's more like, right? like yeah, it's more like the thought that counts. So even if it's just like a small like yeah, gesture. that's there you go. Exactly. Yeah, you know what All I mean. Right. Like okay. I know you, you or you tried to make this for me, and I, it means so much to me that you made it for me and gave me that gift compared to oh, well, you bought me a Louis Vuitton. Right, speaker holder. Yeah, but isn't yeah. that wouldn't that also like go like wouldn't that like fall under like acts of service? No. no, no, acts of service is different. So, yeah, gifts is literally it could be anything. You could write them a note in a card and mail oh. it to them, and they're gonna be like, "Wow, they really you know cared about me here." It could be I found this flower while I was walking home today, and here's a flower, and they're gonna be yeah. you know, "Wow, this is they really cared." Oh, they feel. Flower. Okay, yeah, or no, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Expensive purchases, makes, it could be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Is there anything that it's like you were thinking about them, so you yeah. got that for them, and it. I'm I'm assuming that means like the gift is in some way, like it will like correlates like to their relationship with them, like something that they know that this person is really gonna like, and they're getting that very specific item because of how they feel about it. You know? Yeah, it, it's that too. I mean, it is also just the thoughtless a lot grabbing of, of a flower and, right. you know, handing it. You guys are learning just as much as me today because I don't know <laughs> anything about this stuff. I, I thought that you bringing up acts of service, though. That's a pretty interesting way to think that, yeah. Yeah. But acts of service is definitely not that. Frank? I mean, I'm I'm an acts of service guy, and it's, it's not that. No? You know, I don't care about gifts. I could buy myself stuff. And, you know, it's nice that you get me things or you can, you know, whatever. Now, I like the thought. Like, yeah. I like you thinking about me. Um, but that's where acts of service comes in. I need you to think and then act on that thought. So, so like when my girl does dishes for yeah, me, that's, yeah. that's like that's a good a, act of service. service. Yeah. Yeah. No, I love when she does that. Yeah. Well, like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't got to do it. My fiance used to make me breakfast every morning before I got on the train to go to Philly every morning. And it would be like four in the morning. She would get up and have eggs for me with bacon <clears> and toast and everything. So when I drove that hour <clears> to the train, I got to that train. I ate the eggs and stuff. The train. Not a lot of people got upset with that because the eggy smell. <laughs> so I'm gonna just go to a different car, and it's you know four or five o'clock in the morning. There's nobody here, or whatever. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. and that's an acts of service, and that meant a lot to me. I'm an acts. I'm an acts of service guy. I mean, I'll get into it later about um, how I feel that you need a little bit of each love language, yes. but one is a primary for each person. So right. Like, I need every. Might as well get into it, right? So, yeah. I need every love language. I do. I need to be told they love me. I need to be kissed and, and hand, hold my hand and stuff. And, you know, kind of feel like they're infatuated with me. Stuff, mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, kind of like that. I need every one. The gift one I don't need as much um, because, like, I, I treat myself all the time. But it is nice that for they think they think about it. But at the end of the day, I'd rather um, see you help me out, make me coffee, or know that I have a project that I need to do get it ahead of it and when i get there i'm like oh wow it's already started he already did this surprise oh you know what i mean like something yeah. like that like you know what i mean that's that's more of it for me but again every everybody i think everybody needs a little bit of each love language because you can't have you can't like you can't be told that you're loved constantly but have no acts of service whatsoever right because yeah. then you or you could you could tell me the sky is falling you know or whatever you want you know what i mean or it's raining but you're really pissing on my leg you know what I'm saying? You can tell me whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. But it, at the end of the day, I mean, if you're just an, if you're just a, if you're just a words of affirmation kind of guy, mm-hmm. and that's all that matters to you, then good for you. But I'm I can't be like that. I've been lied to too many times. I've been run through the gutter. I can't be that type of love language. Only that type of love language. And that one can't be my primary type of love language because it was kind of ruined by some of my 
history of events. Yeah, that's actually I wanted to bring that up about the testing. Did you did any guys did take the test? No. They have a test online. You'd have you take the test, figure out your love language. You don't mine, even have to read was, the book. Mine was acts of service, but yeah. Yeah, so I, I retook the test and <laughs> mine changed a bit. So uh I also am now acts of service, but equally to that is words of affirmation for me. So I am actually nice. both. You're doing a great now. job at this podcast. Oh, <laughs> my love tank is overflowing. <laughs> uh but yeah, that's literally what uh, acts of service is. I well, mean, it's okay. doing something for the other person <laughs> intentionally. No, nope. you know, what I mean, taking care of the house for a wife, for a husband, making sure the car is still running, somebody's paying the bills. Right. Those are all acts of service that show somebody that you love them. Okay. Right? Yeah, and you know, mine. When you take the test, it's actually a mix now. It used to be that you were just one and two. You had two main love languages. Now it's Mixed you have all, all of them. Yeah. This is the ones that are most important to you. So this, so this is kind of like, again, like uh, I'm gonna reference back to another podcast that we did with the uh, Alpha, Beta, and Sigma. This mm-hmm. is kind of like where, you know, at times we all have uh, tendencies. tendencies for each of those, you know, personality types. And this is kind of like a situation where it's like, at times we want a certain love language. Are they? I know, I know for relationships, but is it, is it, can, is it? Is there like love languages for like? A business relationship, like with there should be no love in business. No <laughs> love in business. No. Fear and respect, sir. Um, I mean, I disagree. I feel like if you if maybe for somebody, your own team, yeah, yeah, for your own team, but no, not as far as like other companies. I just I'll mean have like respect. Yeah. Not I mean, going. it's hard for me to think anything love as far as love goes. Yeah, in, in, a, in a business, but scenario you got because they're just they're, you know they do make these relationships. I I care for a lot of people that I work with. But it's not like a love kind of relationship. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I care about them. I want nothing to happen to them. You know, I, I love them as a person like that. Yeah. Like, yeah. not like, you know I mean? It's not like a, like a love language per se. But you I don't, don't, I don't take, they're not, I hate to say this because they do mean something to me in my life, but they're not a priority in my life to even obtain some of my love languages, like quality of time. Right. Or, you know I mean? I, right. I, but, I, I the, but service. maybe, hey, I'll, I'll do that email for you. Act of service. Like or what about, like stuff like that, what about words of affirmation? Like, I feel like that's something like people might, if somebody's might, doing a good job. Oh, no, it's definitely, there is a, a platonic way of thinking yeah, about it. There is a yeah. way to play the system of other people's love languages, which is a dangerous double-sided sword because you have to be aware of that danger yeah. right. and people using you for right. it. Like you Taking said. advantage of it. Yeah. So, I mean, it, like it is true. You can play on their love languages for sure yeah. if you know what they are. But, I mean, you know, it's not going to. Blossom of love, or life. right? I, I know that, but I just mean male female. shit we're eating, anyways, right? Like, but I mean, okay, if you yeah. have, okay, if you have an employee, right, that's that's starting to get very disgruntled, and they're not, you know, doing, you know, the best, and they're like not, not to what they're capable of, you know what I mean? Sometimes mm-hmm. maybe some words of affirmation, letting them know that they're doing a good job, and that they mean that they're yeah. valued by the company, might might make them work harder. <sighs> you think? Steve Jobs versus. uh Versus, uh, what is that other guy named Alex, whatever, who love, who gives love to his employees versus Steve Jobs, who just constantly hammers them with words. So uh, different people do need different yeah, different ways of being shown it right. for business, for sure. <laughs> yeah, it also depends on what is in the business. Like, you know, most jobs are just a normal 2% standard raise if you get that. Yeah. Board. Yeah. And what else do you get? You can't get a raise. Like a lot, like some positions and some jobs that I've seen, the only way that you can get a raise is for you to leave and come back. There's not really any incentive. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where is your incentive there? So, you know, the only way that you can incentivize somebody is give them words, give them encouragement, call them out in a meeting. Yeah. Let mm-hmm. them know they're doing a great job and how well they are. Do, you know, a yearly review and say how, how well they are. And there's nothing against them, the manager and stuff. It's just the organization in itself. They're not going to let you do raises. Doesn't matter, right? Doesn't matter if you make the organization X dollars or whatever. They're just going to keep you that two percent if, as long as something doesn't happen to take that away. There's the acts of service coming out. He wants money. <laughs> he wants money. <laughs> you think about it. At the end of the day, these these companies, everybody we work for, and everything we do at the end of the day, they're we're, they're ta- they're they're paying us for our time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So at the end of the day, my time is worth. The amount of dollars and nothing else. Like I need that money because I'm taking that time away from my family. Yeah. The instant that that money 
doesn't come or the instant that that money tries to get skewed or anything like that, that's the instant when I say, well, this, this shit ain't worth it because I'm taking time away from it. Yeah. yeah. No, I get that. that makes for sense. sure. For so sure. I'm a stickler when yeah. it comes to money. Right. Yeah. You, I'm taking my time away. <clears throat> I'm taking my time away. So you pay me. And if you don't pay me, now I'm pissed. Because mm. that time I could have not did anything for you and I wouldn't care that I didn't make the money or whatever. But now I took time away from my little girl or my, my bigger girl. You know, she's yep. getting older. You're taking that time away. So I need that money because you're paying me for my time. And at the end of the day, we're all working for somebody. Right. We're mm-hmm. all working for okay. somebody. Yep. And they're all paying us for our time, whether we're stamping something in a factory or ma- making phone calls. Right. Yeah. They're, taking, yeah. they're paying us for it. That's our opportunity. Like opportunity, you're talking about cost. opportunity cost of time. They're paying us for our opportunity cost of time. Right. So, in other words, it's just opportunity cost of time. And they're not paying you for it. Right. Yeah. yeah. No. Exactly. So that's definitely. So I think it. I think Brian did bring up a good point, yeah. though. I mean, yeah, for sure. Especially if they're a words of affirmation person, mm-hmm. you saying something about them in front of everybody, that's probably going to mean a lot. Yeah. yeah. You know, especially in a job where you're only getting a 2% raise, you know, you're not working for something. It gives you a sense of dignity and respect of value. Right. And now and think about it, quality time. You were saying like we, we do all, um, happy hours and stuff together. As a team and stuff. We cut some camaraderie stuff for teams. So that is quality time outside yeah. of work where you're not working. You're just yeah. Out. And I do like to have conversations. So I'm totally wrong. Now that we had a conversation yeah. about it. And then, <laughs> that's why I, yeah, exactly. So thank you very much for that. So yeah, I, 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 I don't know anything about I don't even know what I'm talking about. Iron <laughs> sharpens iron, brothers. Right. <laughs> you know, like, it makes sense though, because there are, you know, I do have I do have relationships with people at work. I do ask them about their families. I know about their families, I know about their kids, I know about what they do yeah. right. for fun. I know what they do outside of work. I know, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, when, when their car breaks, I know when they're going shopping for a new car, I know. I, find out what kind of model we're looking for. So yeah. I do have these relationships and I do care about them a lot. So yeah. It, it could be. I just, when I think of like love language, I, I think more uh, I encompassed on your love language is what your significant other Right. Department. That's so what that's I, why so I was looking at it. So that's why I, I was like, nah, business, you don't include it in business. Uh, right. Yeah. I, see, but yeah, that, that's great. the thing. Like I, so I, I did, I did do a little bit of research and kind of some of the things that I did read about was like, you know, having, uh, uh, love languages and not necessarily like romantic love languages with coworkers, but I noticed like even for me being, you know, being an operations manager and I deal with people every day and I deal with the same guys. And I noticed that the, the, the nicer I am to them, the more I ask about their families, the more, you know, I tell them they're doing a good job. And instead of demand, they do stuff. I ask them to do stuff and I won't ask them to do anything that I wouldn't do. I noticed I get a lot more productivity out of them because yeah. of it. And they, they want to work like I don't ever get any any like back talk from them when I ask them to get something done. They just get it done. And that's, you know, that's that's kind of just worked for me. I don't know. Like I just kind of associated that with like a platonic type of love language instead of a you know romantic type. Yeah, for sure. For sure. He has a lot of books out for different <clears throat> things. I don't know if he has one for business. He probably does. OK. This book has been rewritten so many times. Yeah. Um, same message, I'm really. Check it out. But yeah. Uh, yeah, so that's words of affirmation. It's, it's not. It, it also in a re- love relationship. It's also looks. Yeah. It's also saying, you know, hey, I, I can't. I'm thankful that you did this, or yeah. I really appreciate you doing that, or you look really good, or you smell really good. Words of affirmation has many different uh, yep. dialects, uh, which we'll get to in a minute. And then the last one is I stink. Physical touch. <laughs> You ain't getting none of that if you stink, sir. I <laughs> no physical right. touch when I stink. Right. She just says, it like, I'll just, like, yeah, I'm going to get a shower. She's like, good, you stink. Yeah, right. Go oh. get a shower. Oh, we missed quality time. But uh, physical touch. Frank did kind of touch on it. Yeah, little. there's a little bit more. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah let's, let's quick do that because physical touch is Dive into that yeah. one. Some so quality, quality time. time. Quality time is an interesting one for me because that's my wife's language. <clears throat> and I have to set time aside for that because for me it's on the bottom. It's second to bottom for me. Yeah, it's almost like it's. I think maybe five percent on mine on my right. test. I'm with you there. I'm yeah, what percentage it was, but my, I'm with you there. Um, you know, she's all about quality time, and I'm always on the go. Yeah, so I mean, quality time isn't just sitting there watching a movie with them either. Mm-hmm. It can be. Yeah. However, most of the time it's talking face to face and listening listening yeah you know uh it's going and doing an activity together it's going for a walk together quality time is literally the time you're giving them 
is quality. It's yeah. It's efficient. I guess you could no, not efficient. It's quality. Yeah. You're giving them real time. You're not looking at your phone. Yeah. Yeah. All cell phones. Yeah. Yeah. Which I mean it goes hand in hand with the, you know, the other, you know, another podcast that we did. I'm gonna reference here. It's you know, the one where we did work life balance, you know. Oh yeah. You know, trying to figure out that that quality time, like, you know, to really unplug from work, unplug from you know, mm-hmm. everything else going on in your life and really sit down and, and be engaged in some quality time with your significant other. So that's quality time. Um, we have physical touch yet, which is, I mean, that's easy. yeah, you, you just got to figure out what touches they like. I am not physical touch. <laughs> Get off me. <laughs> you know, I, I like it, but only by certain people. The only, yeah, right. the, only, the only physical touch I like is the, under the sheets. So, you know, right. I'm not really a big toucher, but. I, I'm you not know. either. I don't, uh, you, you still, like have. I'll walk through the store and my girl likes to like, you know, she'll pinch my ass when I'm walking yeah. around, you know, when we're in an aisle or something or she'll, just, you know, it's just a piece of meat. Yeah. Like, I'm, <laughs> like I, and I hate that, you know, women these days just objectify men. Like, you know, <laughs> like we are not just some piece of meat. We are yeah. people and we have feelings. And I, I just want you to know that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So, I mean, every guy thinks they're physical touch. Every guy. Cause we all love sex we all love sex right that we're, we're is, hardwired that, that way type of physical touch that that's is, only yeah. when it's ripe <laughs> right <laughs> yeah i mean you get older it's less but you know whatever yeah if you're if, if your significant other isn't you know say your words of affirmation your physical your significant other isn't really building you up or encouraging you or giving you that you're not gonna feel much love you're just gonna be there for just sex right and that's how you have to kind of differentiate <laughs> okay am i physical touch or is it just that I really like sex, which all men do, really? Yeah. I mean, and women, but really, you know, yeah. I mean, <laughs> for real. So it's been a, in the book. He even mm-hmm. says how it's hard for men to dis- distinguish, distinguish the uh, two. Yeah. So I'm trying to kind of give a little lesson so that. <laughs> <laughs> but physical touch is, you know, rubbing shoulders, uh, holding hands. You're out in public and you grab them. You wrap your arm around them, or you know, you mm-hmm. pinch their butt, whatever. Uh, so that's what physical touch is. My well, girl's it's pretty you. simple. My girl's definitely physical touch. Uh, <laughs> she loves physical touch. Oh, yeah. So there are dialects of these love languages. Huh? Dialects. So language has different dialects, right. you know? Yeah. You speak, you come from Canada. It's a boot. Hoser. You know, you go down <laughs> south and howdy y'all so there's different dialects that was terrible oh no i can't do that that was no, a terrible do that again no do I'm it one more time no, please i'm done now do but it. anyways uh, <laughs> let me hear your australian accent i God. yeah i'm curious I, I, uh, crocky mate <laughs> that's not that bad, uh, that's not that's bad. Not that, bad. that might have been your best one so bad. far yeah throw another <laughs> shrimp on the barbie mate that's <laughs> pretty Throw him on the spot. Though. Yeah, that was not bad. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> right. But I digress. Fuck you guys. <laughs> oh, man. The different dialects uh, are like, for example, you have acts of service, right? And your wife goes and does dishes, but you don't give a crap about doing the dishes. You want her to keep the house clean. And you'll do the dishes because it's throwing them in the dishwasher. Ah. So you can miss the dialect of Man. the love language that saying. you specifically need met. Right. They might be mowing the lawn when you want the house clean. Um, why do I keep going back to house clean? And I don't know. <laughs> get off that. You're going to get cancer. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know this guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel like that. I think I think men should clean the house too. <laughs> I think men should make their own sandwiches. I agree. Oh God! <laughs> Matter of fact, I made myself a peanut butter and jelly sandwich today. <laughs> Didn't even ask my girlfriend, and she was in the kitchen at the moment. So. Oh man, she just happened to be in the You're kitchen. I don't now. I don't step in the kitchen, so there you go. No, my my fiance makes uh, really good food, especially with chicken parm. Mm. Oh, my Lots God. of good food. So I try to stay away, and I'm not allowed in the kitchen when she's in the kitchen. I'm big. I can't even take up a lot of room. <laughs> you don't have a huge kitchen. <laughs> I can <laughs> island there. I'm not sure there's a kitchen you big enough for you, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you live in a mansion. No, no, no. Yeah. So anyways, the dialect 
There's just different ones, and you got to figure out your spouse's dialect, which isn't hard. As you, long as you kind of, you have to have like everything we're talking here, like even this whole conversation, our conversation from the beginning. All I've been thinking to myself is, it just takes conversation. Yeah. Just have a conversation with your significant other. That's yes. all you have to do. Oh and yeah. If, and 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 at the end of the day, like the way I look at it is, is I try to go through and just say, oh, I'm just gonna talk to them, tell them how I feel, talk to them truthfully, be totally transparent, and then hopefully they take that and do something about it, right? Because it yeah. shows that they care, right? Good service. Yeah. Right. So if I tell you that you're bothering me or this is bothering me, let's talk about it. Let's come to a compromise and let's adhere to that compromise. Right. So everything yeah. Everything we're talking about here is just a conversation. You don't know. You can try to guess what that person's love language is, but at the end of the day, if you don't have a conversation with them about it, you might and like when us. when I first met you and we were talking, you were saying how you schedule your time <clears throat> for not only your wife but for your kids too. So I'm assuming that you know your kids, you know, have the um, the, the time is their is their act, you know, is their love language. Mm -hmm. right? So um, you're you're doing that, but you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't know that unless you actually have a conversation with them and talk to them and figure out what their love. Everything comes down to conversation. It really does. If you can logically have a conversation if you, with someone. If you can have that conversation. That's the issue. Yeah, right. If you can't, I mean, what they're nagging you about, what they keep complaining about, or what they say they wish you did all the time, that's probably what they're looking for for their love I mean, language. That, could, that should, be, that should be an inkling for a man to see the conversation start. Well, yeah. Let's talk about that then. What, what, let's, let's talk about that. I want to... There's my way your needs to be met, met just like my my needs are. I, mean, I want my needs to be fulfilled in that as well. So let's let's have that conversation. What what do you need me to do? What would you like me to do better? What would you like me to not do? Yeah, you know what I mean. And then it's up to me to try to compensate for that. So that's literally what happened in my marriage. Right, my marriage is falling apart. Like I said, I could work all day, <clears throat> say hi, how you doing? I feel loved. I don't care. You know what I mean? I could work all day, not see you, talk to you for a couple minutes, and I'm good. My wife is quality time. Yeah. And the D word was thrown around divorce. And I sat down and I said, what is going on? We went back. I went back to this book because I have previously read it. And I thought, okay, I know she's quality time. What would, how would this, we, how can we make this work? Yep. And, you know, the book says 15 minutes. My wife was like, I need an hour. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's what it was. Um, so that's actually how we saved our marriage was in part to this book because I real you know it helped it helped make it simple to understand. I think we could all I think most of us could have done without it, but it makes it so simple to understand that it's easy to attack and implement. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a simplified way to I, save marriages or you know, make you realize what's really going on. Yeah. I mean, and I didn't read the book, but it's it's kind of common sense, right? And as long as you have a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of uh, about it, you know what I mean? A little bit of structure and yeah. you know, fundamentals right. about love languages and stuff that's open for knowledge and conversation with the other person and say, hey, listen, how about these five different love languages? And I think that you're this and this, but, you know, do you like more when I do this or when this is done or something like that? So mm -hmm. you can actually help yeah. decipher your significant other's love language without any, you know, without any book reading or anything like that, because you have the fundamentals right. and then you figure out. What, but again, you're lucky and I'm lucky. You're lucky as well. We, we all can have those conversations with our significant others. There's plenty of other relationships, marriages and stuff like that, where that open dialect is not available. Right. So yeah. you have to have that significant other that still wants the relationship and put work right. in because every relationship is work until you die. I mean, it doesn't, yeah, it does not like you get married and then oh we're married for thirty years and everything's hunky dory. We don't have to try to get along. Anymore. That's not. That's. I mean, you're yeah. still, still going to get on each other's nerves and still pick your battles and stuff. So you still got to try. So my girl actually, we're like she's she's not like a conversation like person. She does not like to have conversations and she's not really good with that. So like for me, I could talk with her for two hours and she might only say four words, you know, in that conversation. Right. So for me, I kind of have to read her body language with, with a lot of things, yeah. you know, and I have to kind of like, so like, I know that like her, her like primary love language would be physical touch. She, she wants to feel wanted, you know, well, I need but to touch her while you're talking to her. I do. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, but, yeah. but then yeah, I like, my, the sofa, like wrap her hug, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, but, yeah. but this is things Whisper that I've learned. These are things that I've learned because I want the relationship to work and she wants the relationship to work. So she pays attention to me too. And she knows that I like when she cooks, she knows that I like when she cleans and you know, I take care of 
Like she, she does not mind taking like the housewife role and I don't mind taking the provider role, you mm-hmm. know? So, and I know that her, her secondary love language is acts of service. So she does a very good job at maintaining the house, but she gets very stressed out and, and frustrated with the kids. It's something that really, really like will start. So sure. I'll notice it. Kids, having kids is like being pecked to death. Like right. Chicken. Yeah. So I'll like, I'll, I'll, no, seriously. It is. So, <laughs> yeah. so I know like Hazel, our daughter, she's one. She's very, very like attached to, to Ronnie at the hip. She's like attached to her at the hip and just wants to be with her constantly. And I'll recognize that. But I know if I go somewhere, if I like to go, if I go outside, Hazel instantly like switch focus and she wants to come with me immediately. So I'll do stuff like that on purpose. So that way, Hazel will want to come with me and get away from her for a little bit so she can so she can kind of like clear her mind for yeah. for a little bit you know and then then she's usually pretty good after that and then uh she hates it when I play video games she hates that mm-hmm. you know which I can't blame her <laughs> you know but she You're touching that controller <laughs> right or it's, when, it's usually when I put the headset on because then she then there's no uh, you know uh, it's, okay. it's, you know I'm tuned out for a little bit mm-hmm. <laughs> but um so she hates that so I I have I've very significantly like slowed down on my video game playing over the years, you know, and I, like I hardly ever play anything anymore. Like occasionally I do, but not, I don't crazy. I'm blessed. My fiance is a gamer. Oh, lucky you. How nice. did you, how'd you do that? <laughs> how did you do it? I don't know. We just met at the gym and had so much in common. And <clears throat> except for one thing led to another. What? Nothing. She doesn't have a penis. on <laughs> <laughs> You gotta watch out these days, man. I didn't know I was gonna. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta watch out with yeah. people in the gym. The dude with a jar of Vaseline by every freaking door in his house. Oh. <laughs> You're telling me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Good one. Yeah. Um, funny time. No, yeah. So I'm, I'm definitely blessed. She plays video games. She even plays Madden with me. Madden. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, so I'm, I think. I told you. I told you I'm blessed, man. Yeah, we work welcome. from home. We get to spend a lot of time together, but we spend time away from each other. I That's try to help her so she doesn't spend as much time with the kids. She gets her own time. I let her yeah. have girl weekends and stuff, go away with the girls, whatever. I trust you. You know what I mean? Like, right. You See, gotta I, do that. It's all I know. about teamwork. Yeah. yeah. So she, she likes when, uh, so her, her son, Braden, um, his dad lives in Florida. He's, he's like involved. Like he does do stuff for him. You know, he'll like send money for him every here and there. He'll, you know, he talks to him, tries to stay in contact, but. He doesn't really have any interest in coming up and seeing him or things like that. So he does, right? He doesn't. I can't. Yeah. So, but you know, so Braden doesn't exactly have that father figure. So I took on that role now. Like Braden really likes to play video games and he likes football and like so. Oh, I see. So there's some things there that I see. Yeah. See, See I, it's all, I'm, playing the game I'm playing with the I'm trying to bond with Braden. I'm just, you know? Yeah, we're so, gaming it up. He so loves when I play. Right. How are you going to deny, deny your child this quality right. time? <laughs> and she like, she I learned like, about quality time. That's right, quality time. Right. I learned about quality yeah, time. And, and it's I an have, act of service because I'm, ta- I'm taking I'm, the role. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm taking it off of your, off of your oh, hand here. Yeah, like yeah. I, you know, Maybe playing the system here. Oh, dear Lord. Podcasting. This is called this is called manipulation. Yeah, that's no, what this is called. Call Don't do that. <laughs> Don't do the manipulation. But no, I mean, that's cool that you get to bond with them like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he enjoys it. I mean, that's how my daughter. That's what my daughter has going on with my fiance too. Her mom is absent. Yeah, been absent since I got custody over three years ago. I think they haven't talked. And that's tough. Over two years. Dang, that's tough. I mean, like, it's so nice at least having. So yeah, I've been there with my father. She, I mean, she's gone through like her first <laughs> menstrual cycle. Yeah. You know what I mean, and everything. I'm, what am I going to do with that? I'm like, oh, <laughs> stick some tape on it. Put her duct tape on it. I don't know. You know I mean? I'm, right. I'm joking. Yeah. But, I'm yeah. Doing, but I mean, she's there. Yeah. You see what I mean? And that yeah. to me is an amazing act of service. Yeah. Amazing act of service. So if that, if she cares about that, and that means a lot to her, she might be kind of acts of service too. Like you said, right. that she might yeah. be. So yeah. she might be physical touch first. Yep. Acts of service second. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I'm assuming it, it has the love or the words of affirmation have to be in there somewhere. Like she has to, when you say you love her and stuff, yeah. she has to, that has to. Yeah. Yeah. It's, everybody, everybody has to have a I would little bit that, of words of affirmation yeah. in their love language. So thing. otherwise they're, they're, well, you never tell me you right. love me. Right. Well, I do this, 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 and this for you. Well, you don't say you love I, me. See what I'm saying? You need to have a little bit in that tank. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like a lot of 
like somebody's love language will come out in the things that they do. Something that they like, they might do themselves. Well, yeah. So like I know it's true. So now this is this is actually like I've been enlightened right now myself because I'm thinking about this in the moment right now. So my girl will, you know, occasionally like two or three times throughout the week, she'll send me a message and it'll be like random in the middle of the day when I'm working and I'll pull out my phone and I'll be like, oh, she messaged me and I'll open it up and it'll be like, hey, I just wanted to let you know that I love you, you know. Uh, we really, really appreciate everything you do for us. All your hard work doesn't go unnoticed. Like you're, wow, so that is she'll, words, words, she'll words. She'll do stuff like that all the time to me, yeah. you know, and it's like, now that I think about it, like I don't ever return that favor. You need to reciprocate. Yeah, I definitely. do. I definitely do. Yeah. it. But I'm, I'm thinking about it now and it's like, okay, this is starting to make a little bit more sense for me at the moment. Like, okay, my girl's definitely, she probably needs words of affirmation as well. She probably needs I, to hear this stuff as well. Yeah, oh, for sure. Yeah, <laughs> that's definitely going to be big for her. Yeah. I think you should actually, even if you take the test or you figured out your spouse's love language, you still got to sprinkle a little bit of the other with every, you know what I mean? Like I'll get my wife a gift every now and then unexpected, you know, Amazon package shows up, got her name on it. You know, she's not really gifts, but she loves it. (laughs) My girl orders enough. Amazon (laughs) shit for herself. She just does it. It is the devil. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get packages all the time. I'm like, what the hell is this? <laughs> Where did this come from? We're yeah. waiting on like probably five of them right now. Yeah. Yeah, but there is a lot of stories in there where people were sincerely showing their love, but it wasn't meeting the other person's need. So you do have to make sure you do kind yeah. of spend that time to figure it the out. The dialogue. Yeah. You gotta figure yeah, it there's got to be something. Yeah. Because, like I was just saying, you know, you can have a huge fight where you could say, well, you never tell me you love me, and that's my love language, and you never tell me that. And the other person can say, what are you talking about? I buy you earrings every week. Right. Yeah. I'm spending thousands of dollars on you every month. Right. Yeah. Do I, I, don't, I shouldn't have to tell you. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, I get it. That disconnect there. You know what I mean? But all you need mm-hmm. is a conversation. Like, you know, a really nice day. You get me all these things. I really appreciate it. But it would be nice if you tell me you love me once in a while. Like yeah. all it takes is that one little conversation. Yes. The man is a man and cares about the woman and vice versa. Mm-hmm. A good woman and cares about the man. They're going to change it. Yeah. Right. Because they care about that other person. You know what I'm saying? They're going to yeah. change the way they are. They're not going to, or they're at least going to attempt it. Nobody changes overnight, right? Yeah. yeah. But they're, you're going to at least see an attempt. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I just, yeah, because that sincerity thing has been thrown around. Well, I really did love her, you know, this way. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, that's not sure the way it needed it. to be done with her, you know, so I just want to throw that out there. Just because you're sincere doesn't mean it's reaching deep down into their heart and filling their tank the way it needs to be. Yeah, that you know? makes sense. Uh, so, like you said, I do do this with my kids, too. Yeah. Absolutely. This is a great, he actually even has a separate book. Uh, also a great read, but it's basically just recycled stuff. Um, but it's for kids. It is amazing. It is amazing. I do. I use all five with my kids growing up because some of them are still a little hard to tell, giving them the test, but it doesn't it doesn't feel like it's quite hitting it right. So this can definitely be applied to children. It should be for everybody. Well, I mean, but I think... I think, you know, it's cool that we could read a book about it and all, but I think it's pretty common sense, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I think that... A child's love language, the number one love language of every child is quality time. Yeah, I would think about it. Think, think about, about it. Well, I mean, think about it. They did they did a study, I forget what it was or who what it was or whatever, if I saw it on TikTok or whatever, but they did a study that was they asked children how did they know their mommy or their daddy loved them? And every kid said they play with them. Mm-hmm. So what is that? Yeah. Quality time. Quality time. Spend quality time with your kids, mm. then that's, that's how important. they know they love you, right? Or that you love them rather. Yeah. And you, you know, spend the quality time with them. Tell them you love them. Give them hugs. Give them kisses. <clears throat> buy them toys. Like you literally give kids. You spoil them with all five love languages when they're children. Yeah. You mm-hmm. spoil them so much with every, except quality. Not everybody does quality time. Think yeah. about it. Not everybody does quality time. Yeah, that's probably. Always buying them toys. Everybody's buying kids toys. Everybody's doing this, that, and the other, saying how cute they are, saying that they love them, everything like that. But quality time is the one everybody tends to lack in, and that's mm-hmm. the most important one. Yeah, that's the thing. I think I think men in general, men in general, uh, women are, are pretty good with that because they spend a lot of time with the kids. But I feel like men in general, 
you know, we're so worried about providing and making sure that they have what we didn't have mm-hmm. that yeah. quality time definitely lacks. Yep. I yeah. know that's, I could, I could, I could say that that's definitely me. Like yeah, I, cause yeah. I, yeah, cause I want to, for me, I want to build a legacy that, you know, exactly. my kids can inherit because I don't want them to miss out like <laughs> I did on mine, with right. mine, my dad. Right. I yeah. don't want them to have to spend their whole life grinding to like, to, to build something and they, they do the same thing with their kids, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, I want to. I just want to give my. I don't want to hand everything to my kids. Right. Right. But I want to give right. them the basic fundamentals. Absolutely. That they can do this on their own, and then and then take those fundamentals and give them to their kids. Ultimately, when they become an adult, they have to cross that line themselves. Yeah. yeah. I want to give you, and that's the thing. Like kids need to make. Kids are you know individuals need to make their own mistakes and make their own paths. Yeah. yeah. But our job as parents is to give them the tools that they could go any path they choose. We just then hope that they choose a righteous path. Right. But at least they'll have the tools for it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So here's where I turn a little dark on the book. Oh, you guys ready? He always has his twists. <laughs> yeah, he He's known for this. It's his shtick. <laughs> So here's where I have a problem. One of the problems. <sighs> Most people aren't going to be gifts. Most people aren't. This is actually a very rare love language. Mm-hmm. But what about when you give a grand gesture type gift? Like I'm not gifts. Oh, yeah. Gifts is zero when I took the, no. When I give you something for it's a Cheers. priceless heirloom in my family because you and I are so close and I'm on my deathbed. Dude, that means so much my dad invented my biological dad invented a key with a light in it before it was marketed before anybody else had invented it but he didn't get the patent and all that jazz but he had the original key he made and he handed that down to me now i'm not gifts i couldn't give a poop about it you know i go buy whatever i want i don't care so when he gave that key to me man it meant a lot and i think the book misses that yeah, I'm sure. It does. There's something there that has not been simplified and put into the book yet. Right. You know, and I think if if you're given like this grand gesture of a gift to your spouse, or let's use men to women, you give your wife something so crazy and big and cool, a car or something, yeah. that's going to speak love. You're going to feel that. And I think that's missed a bit in the book with yeah. grand gesture. I mean, I can could, I could relate. I'm My mom gets me. My mom's is a, is a gift. Well, at least that's what she does to the kids. Like she gives gifts to us all the time. Yes, yeah. her acts of service. And I think that was because, like, even when I remember when I was younger, um, she was a single mother. We lived with my grandmother, her mother, and she would work all the time. And every time she would come home, she'd bring me a toy from work hmm. because she felt guilty that she had to go to work and not hmm. spend time with me. So I think that's why she evolved into this. Act, you know, this gifts of love language um, for her, yeah. but and I don't I don't really care. I mean, I love my mom. I don't really care for the gifts with my mom. It's it's not along. It's not the lines. Let's say this, and this just dawned on me: your acts of or your your love languages are different for each different type type of person. So, like mm-hmm. with my fiance, my love language with her is acts of service, you know, quality time. Words of affirmation. It's a little <laughs> bit of everything. With my mom, I, uh, it's really quality time. Yeah. Wow, dude, that's, that's really interesting. Quality. And yeah. that just dawned on me right now. Because wow. I, I know my time with my mother is limited on this earth. I'm 41 years old. I'm getting older. So I don't care about words from my mom. I mean, I love hearing my mom say right. she loves me. But I don't care about none of that. But I care about her spending time with my mother. Wow. That's, so that's incredible. That's different. a good. That's a good way to think about it. That but is a, going back yeah. to that. It's total tangent where it was really gone. But going back to it, I was like, she always buys these little trinkets or whatever, buys this stuff all the time. But for my thirtieth birthday, she bought me a, a grandfather's clock, and saying, you know, wrote this big letter to me saying why she bought it and for my thirtieth birthday. You know, I, you know, just I don't even want to get out of my but right, she right. just wrote that, and that meant a lot to me. You know what I mean? So, yeah. You know, so that's incredible. So I do it totally. Yeah, you know I mean? like, there's yeah. something about it that's missed. I, I remember like, so I remember when when my grandfather passed away and he was like one of my, my best friends, you know, I went everywhere with him throughout the day. Like he, it was in 2005 that he passed away. But I remember like thinking like when, when everybody started getting things, you know, from him, like, oh, like 
Scott, he left you his watch, you know, and then like uh, some people, like somebody got his pool stick, somebody got his dartboard, like things like yeah. that. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, I was so close with him and I didn't, I didn't get it. Like I didn't get anything. Like, and I, I understand, like I didn't, I didn't understand, you know, why, but I was, I was also very young, you know, um, I didn't really understand why, but I feel like I would have, I would have liked, and again, I'm not a gift person either. Mm-hmm. But I, I feel like I would have liked to get something from him. Like I would have liked to get it, like something that I could just have from him, yeah. you know, forever. And I, you know, yeah. I didn't get anything. And and it, it's okay though. Like I have a lot of memories. I have a lot of pictures. I have a lot of, you know, we can went fishing all the time and things like that. And, and honestly, like a lot of the things that I remember is the quality time that him and I spent, mm-hmm. you know, and that's something that nobody could take away from me. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and, uh, to think of it like you know lack of some of these can cause anger and remorse hurt right so and rebellion anger is the path to the dark side rebellion's a big one for kids yes. they so, don't feel loved they're so gonna rebel love languages are very important and i think all children need to be loved and cared for and and the ones that don't um they're the ones that don't do well no no i mean yeah. a lot of people make jokes and are trolls on the internet and say you know daddy didn't love you that's why you act like this. Yeah. You know, somebody acting out or being a Karen or a yeah. Ken or whatever the male Karen is. Um, but they're like, oh, some, somebody's, somebody's daddy didn't love them. Stuff like that. But there's some truth behind that. There is. Not, not in the joke, obviously. It's right. A, it's right. a poor joke. Yeah. But in, in the truth of the matter is if you don't feel loved or you feel inadequate, like I wasn't loved by my real father. Mm-hmm. I know I wasn't loved by my real father. I could tell. Yeah. Um, and that, <clears throat> that affected me and my self-worth. Because yeah. I'm looking at myself, well, why wouldn't somebody want? Right. So you already you already doubt yourself. Yeah. So got to include the kids. You got to have the words, yeah. of, you know, words of affirmation, all the love languages to them. But mainly, play with the damn kids. Yeah. Yeah. Play I with your kids. Play with your kids. Spend time with them. Please. Please. Yeah. I mean, every chance you get. Next thing I wasn't love- 16, wanting to drive a car, wanting nothing to do with you. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. why I have the flip side of it. I have a two soon to be three year old saying, "Daddy, come play with me. I I want to see you. You came back. Oh my god." Yeah. And then I have a 16, you're like, oh my God, dad, leave me alone. <laughs> you're annoying. No, I you know feel like I mean? my like, kids test me all the time with that. Yeah. yeah. Can we come over, dad? Can we come over? Yeah. They come over, you know, because they, they were there with their mom. Uh, my son's uh, Lex and Aries there with their mom. Uh, she has, well, we don't have a custody agreement. We just have. Well, that's uh, cool. It's good. Good. Uh, yeah. Good. Kids right. Like, oh, yeah. Wow. Exactly. Oh, that's a, yeah, yeah. We don't, we've never had a custody agreement. Yeah, so yeah. we kind of just, we just agreed that. It, their routine is good with her. You know, they have a good routine during the week. And then, you know, she works a lot, so she doesn't get to spend a lot, whole lot of time with them. So on the weekends, it's very important to us. So I get to spend a lot of time with them on my weekend, and she gets to spend a lot of time with them on her weekend. You know, it sucks that there's a, a, a period there where I don't get to see them for a little while. But, yeah. you know, but it's face good time, for them. We talk to them a lot. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or if they want to come down, I will let them come you know, come down to my house whenever they want. They're always welcome. It's not, it's not even a matter of letting them come. It's just whenever they want to come, as long yeah. as I'm home, yeah. you know, come on down. Um, but now since I just moved recently, they're only, you know, right up the street from me. So they can, oh, they can walk down the house. You know, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited. They're, I'm supposed to have them this weekend, but with the whole move thing going on, I just, we didn't have a whole lot of room to like, you know, everything's getting situated right now. They don't have the, the rooms not set up yet. Like if, there's a lot going on, but I know like, I know it's this is affecting them. I know because they call me a lot and they want they keep asking, "Is the house set up? Can I come down yet? Are we ready?" Like, and I don't, I just don't have. That you makes know. you feel like you, you got it done, huh? I do, yeah. And that's why I I've been going nonstop since Friday. I've been going nonstop yeah. trying to get this all done so that way, you know. And then we're finally to a point where, like, like just before, uh, just before I came here, I sat down for maybe, maybe like ten minutes, I think it was, and. Uh, I have my, my PlayStation set up, but we don't have internet yet. So Braden was like, can we try and play something? And I don't, I don't have too many games that I can play off. So we played like this little, uh, it's almost like Mario Kart, but it's like a racing game. Mm -hmm. Um, so we, we played that real quick. We played like three races on it real fast and they're quick races. So did that. And then I was like, okay. And then I got off and, and, and left to come here. But you know, that was some quality time, but I would just, you know, part of me gets a little upset that I I wish Lex and Aries could have been there too, you know, to, yeah, but in time. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right down the road. You're doing better. You're right down the road. Oh yeah, them. yeah. Yeah. You'll be able to walk down. There. Yeah. Like you said, it's not a matter of them being able to come over. Before it was them being able to come over because you go pick them up and stuff. Yeah. But yeah. Now it's just like 
hey, Dad, can we come over? Why are you asking? Just come down. Just come down the street. Walk yeah. down the house. <laughs> or let me know you're coming down to make sure you're safe walking. Down right. Down how many blocks it is. It's but like I mean, two port, blocks. It's port's pretty far. safe. Man. Oh, yeah. Port's. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's the whole, our area is pretty, pretty <laughs> right. safe. We live in a pretty decent area, so yeah, we can yeah. do something. Like that. But uh, yeah. I'm not like Philly, like the stuff that's going on with Oh, stuff going on in Philly, I'm good. oh my gosh, <clears throat> what's going on in Philly? But I don't know if we should talk about that. Either. No, <laughs> we'll that's talk. that's talk for another we'll time. Talk, we'll talk later. That's shop talk. <laughs> <laughs> you can do that on your personal later if you want. You can talk about it. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> that sounds but good. also being intentional with that too would help a lot with your kids. Yeah. Having an intentional time with them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's something that, that that's hard. You're... That just if you're, I'm not good with not being intentional. If you're with loosey goosey with your schedule and stuff, that's cool. That's great. Keep that flexibility, but also intentionally make an effort. Yeah. You know. Yeah, just, absolutely. Just try to connect because it gets harder when your kids are older. It's hard to connect with my 15 year old. Uh, yeah. Is. Now the cool thing about it is she's gonna be 16, so I'm gonna connect with her because we're gonna go driving every I night. I can't wait for that. We're gonna go driving all the time, and that's gonna be our thing. Yeah. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. I'm giving her a Cadillac, so she she'll, oh, she'll nice. be happy. It's an nice. 11. It's nothing crazy. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, so that's going to be her first car. It's all to Give me a car. Uh, it's my old. Um, so she's excited. I'm excited for her. She's nervous, too, which yeah. is good. I want her to be scared of speed. I don't want her to speed. Yeah. Man. Yeah, it's good. We just, I just had this that's, conversation with Braden yesterday because he was, he was talking about wanting to drive. And I was like, well, I said, I'm playing right now. When you're 16, you're getting your permit immediately and you are getting your license because I am not. So at my work, like, we have a lot of guys that are in their 20s or late 20s, and none of them have their license. I, yeah. They're I all basically sponge I, bottom. I don't they're all I, I don't get it. I grown men with no license. Not have a license. And, drive and they're all them. great people, but they're you know they're just they're just you know. I can't tell you how many people I've helped get their license, and I don't really? understand where are the parents. Where yeah. Where. Is anybody stepping in well, these people's I think, lives? I, honestly, I think what it is is they're just like, well, you're not going to get a car. I don't have money for a car, so there's no reason for you to get a license. So the kid doesn't even bother getting a license because you're like, crazy. why? You see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. My parents. how are they going to get them back and forth to work? Yeah. I mean, unless everybody has all these friends that drive. I mean. Yeah, but in our area, it's not like there's like the, the public transportation is not. There is no public transportation. Exactly. We have one That's Uber. I mean. It takes you two hours to get. Right. It's 50 <laughs> bucks to get from my house to Hamburg. Right. right. <laughs> Right. So that, that's you know I mean? my, that's my point. So like, <laughs> but I mean, just having it will give you an option. Like, okay. So for instance, here at my work, even if you don't have a, a car, you can get to work. If you have your license, we can put you on our insurance at the company and you can get your, we get like a, a medical car, like a medical examiner's car so they can r- drive our trucks. You know what I mean? So yeah. we get those and then you could drive a truck. So you, if you want to move up and be a crew leader, you know, you need, yeah. you need to be able to drive. So yeah. if you don't have your license, you can't do that. So you know, I know we're getting kind of a little bit away from the topic here, but yeah, no, that's important. No, but mean, it's important. Yeah, you know, yeah, that's important. Are, my acts of service is for you to get a license. So you can right. drive. I help you out. <laughs> <laughs> I help you out. You know, like, my my parents were like words it. of affirmation. Congratulations Good on your job. license. You should have got like 15 years ago. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> my so my parents never pushed me. They didn't. Yeah. So my parents, all again, my parents were not really. They weren't present. I was raised by my grandparents. Uh me and my mom, we don't have the strongest relationship anymore. Um, you know, matter of fact, I just, I'll probably never talk to her again. And that's yeah. a whole different story. It'll change. I'm sure. sure. Mm-hmm. I, hope. It's, um, I, I would like to say that she, she would, she'll come around maybe one day, but she's course. right now. She, there's no good in that woman. And I, you know, I, I, I respect her. She's my mom, but I, you know, I don't like her. So <laughs> listen, just put it that way. My biological dad, Chased yeah. me down a field with a pipe to kill me. He also ran us off the road. He had beat my mother, right? Yep. He is 70 years old and the sweetest old man that you could ever meet. He is completely 360 to his life. Yeah. There is hope. And just, I mean, put it in the back pocket and hope that it happens one day. Don't rely on it. That depends if you but, want it, though. Like my yeah. biological See, father could change a leaf tomorrow and I want one. So yeah, no, no, I, you know what I mean? It is, it is what it is. I've lived in the same home, you know, for 31 years of my life. And, you know, I was, it was, it was supposed to get willed to me and my grandmother did not, she did not get the will changed in time. Um, and my, it was still willed to my mom from years ago. Uh, and then she would not respect her wishes to, to give me the house. I told her I'd pay, you know, whatever she had to pay to, to 
final, like all the tax, all the inheritance taxes, whatever she needed, I'll, mm-hmm. I'll pay it. State tax. And she would not, no, no chance. And then it got to a point where she wanted me to, I was paying every bill. I was paying the taxes and then she wanted me to pay her fire insurance for it and everything that, you know, if anything would happen, she would get it. And I would just, that was kind of where I draw the line there. I was like, you know what? Like, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. You know, if you're not going to, if you're not going to respect her wishes, you're not going to do this. Like I'll, I'll just leave. And she was perfectly fine with, you know, she's like, okay, well then matter of fact, you have to get up by the end of the month. And I was like, you know, I know, I know legally she'd have to go get an eviction notice and do that. But, but why, but why, why Wait, would, I would have waited until the winter and then she can't evict you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> kids in the house yeah. But, yeah. But, but why, why put myself through it? Why, why yeah. be stressed and think the whole time, like, you know, have that in the back of my head that I could lose my home. I could lose my home and my, my, my girlfriend and my daughter, they would have to go stay with their sister or something like that. And we'd be split up. And like, mm-hmm. I just, why do that? Why w- would you ever, no. ever consider doing that to one of I your kids? Never, ever. I would never see my mother doing that either. I my would, mother would give me everything she could. Right. She'd give me, yeah. There's four of us, right? So yeah. she'd give all of us everything she'd have. I would give my kids, if I only had, she, she has two houses, but she has that. her own house and then, and then has, and now she has that one as well. And instead of giving it, to me, who, you know, and everyone in the family knows that she wanted me to have it. Instead of giving it to me, she tells me to get out so she could have that. So she could sell her other house. And, you know, we're all judged at the end. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of but course. I, would, I would give my kid like it, for me. I know how I feel about my kids. I know what I would do for my kids. I know if I only had one house and they needed a place, I would give them my own house before telling them, nope, get out on the street. You're on your two, own. I can name two people. <laughs> I can name two people that are like that with their kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. Same yeah. situation with my daughter. There's a house that was supposed to be given, and she, the mother got all pissed off that it wasn't going to her. Right. While she's living. And my daughter's living down the street. Yeah. It's all, dude, it's all just yeah. the type of person there. Unfortunately, um, you, I ended up with a shitty dad, and ended up with a shitty mom. Yeah. <laughs> and don't get me wrong, my dad. No offense. Yeah. No, no, listen, not, a, not at all. My, listen, my dad was not. turned out. My dad yeah. was not the greatest person either, in and out of jail constantly his whole life doing drugs and always chose that that life over over spending time with us. Now, he always – my dad was uh, – I guess I would say he was a words of affirmation kind of guy because he would always tell us that he loved us. <laughs> he would always tell us that he this cared about us. words of affirmation can't be my love life. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. He it's would dangerous. always say this kind of stuff. Yeah. But he never he never did any kinds of acts of service to like to, – to prove that, you know, he, he really cared about us. Yeah. It's you raining, know, it's raining. It's not good. That's right. You know. Exactly. Yeah. And so it was, but I mean, my, my point is, you know, uh, he just, he, so my dad was not the greatest guy ever, but now again, like your dad, he's, he's 68 years old and he's now one of like the sweetest old guys you could ever, yeah. you'd ever meet. And yeah, I mean, he kind of like, he turned it around a little bit now and, and now, you know, he's involved and he, he calls all the time and he. He put in a lot of effort over the last three years, and now I finally got to a point where I was like, okay, you know what? You know, we can give this relationship another try. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. And and my mom is like yours also. She would give you the shirt off her back. Oh, if, 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 yeah, she, if she was the self, most mom. selfless person I've ever met. Yeah. yeah. So uh, <clears throat> that brings me to the other point in the book that I think was missed, which is sacrifice. Oh, gosh. Talk about that sacrifice is yeah. lightly touched but i don't think he really went deep enough on it he said yeah you're gonna sacrifice have to be an act of service though <clears throat> or is that like is that supposed you, to be its own love, love yeah, language you, out of i sacrifice love. my time to give quality time to my wife <clears throat> you know so, what I mean? so own sacrifice yeah for like quality for own sacrifice for others love yeah, yeah, that's yeah, like that's or right. or even not even their love language. If you sacrificed your money to buy something that somebody really needed, but you're not a gifts person, yeah, you know what I mean. I guess that could be acts of service, couldn't it? No, I feel like well, you're, you're, you, might, you might, you might be, you might, not you yeah. yeah, you might be onto something though, because I know if I if I sacrificed time at work to leave early to go spend time with her, mm-hmm. she would take that sac. She would look at that sacrifice like that was. Like, yeah, it's a big know, set. You know, opportunity cost. Opportunity cost. Exactly. You know? For me, I now see. I, I look at it a little bit differently than she does. You know, I look at it as you know financial stability, and she looks at it as I'm missing time with the family. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's I that's think a I, struggle in everybody. That's right. age so, old, man. So, exactly. So, <laughs> so, so, so if I if I sacrifice 
if I sacrifice a little bit of that time at work to, to go home and spend time with her, like that's, or just, just to even be in the house, not necessarily spend time with her, just to, to unplug. So I can, I could be, you know, you know, uh, focused on our relationship just a little bit more, you know, that's something you're right. You're on to something there. Yeah. And that ties into rich versus poor. Ooh. It, if you're poor, Gifts are gonna mean a lot. That's true. You can and then you become you rich. Frank, it's fine. And then, <laughs> and then you become rich, and you can buy whatever you want. And gifts kind of lose meaning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the Schuylkill County thousand era. Yes, you are. <laughs> Listen, I'm. <laughs> I got thirty four dollars, so we're good. <laughs> oh, my God. oh man. Actually, negative X. You owe me eighty bucks. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> You're a negative air. <laughs> no, no, I'm just, I'm not that bad. I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not, I'm not I, I got a. No, little... but you're right. Yeah. That makes sense. I mean, the, that's why gifts don't matter as much to me because me. I have money now. Buy my own shit. I buy whatever I want. You know? <laughs> and I ask the kids what they need, and I ask my fiance what they need. You know what I mean? I just fuck the whole <laughs> <laughs> listen, listen. I'm a, uh, I I go to work. I, I bust my ass. I put her on my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see shit. <laughs> no, yeah, right. <laughs> no, she does a great job paying my bills, and she she takes uh, like she I'm handles a, business. No, yeah, we're just business. Like, you know, yeah, you know, dealing with she was right. We're a power couple. Uh, but that's that's that makes total sense. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a big difference, and it also goes hand in hand with ugly versus handsome or attractive. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean are you gonna get physical touch if you're busted? Probably not. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so I mean, that's gonna mean a lot. The physical touch of the lights, which get turned off before the physical touch <laughs> happens. You know I mean? right. <laughs> yeah, that's like terrible. Duty is only light such a way. Yeah. So I mean. These are Probably some good. For that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Everyone oh, looks sorry. the same with the lights off. <laughs> Beat the rush. Go ugly early. Go ugly <laughs> early. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> or just, oh, just drink God. a lot of alcohol. No, don't do that. Oh, just don't do that. Oh, <laughs> a lot of it. Oh, I'm going to be giving up more quality time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. But yeah, so I mean, with those things in mind, I know when I took my test, though, my love language has changed. And according to the book, your main love language doesn't usually change. Shouldn't. It shouldn't. But it does. But it does. Because, of, like I just said, my mom, I have a different love language for my mom right. than I do for my fiance. Yeah. yeah. It does change, especially like when you have kids. Oh, yeah. oh man, you're running around with your head cut off. And somebody stops and, you know, changes a diaper, even as simple as oh, that. Yeah. It could mean the world. Bro, how about somebody, somebody bringing you food? Oh, dude. When there's a death in the family or yeah. or you have a kid and you guys are running around, not really Just, having, you know, the mother's recuperating, you're trying to help out as much like that. And somebody drops off a freaking lasagna. Taking something, something off your plate there. God, it's like a practical semi as soon as that happens. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah, it half really rock, is. Not half half right there. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, food. Like, you know I mean? Half a pack of, half a pack but think of rolling. About it. That, think about it, though. That lasagna probably made them at least, you know, <laughs> half an hour to one hour to make, right? That's right. the hour you get back your time that you're not trying to run around sticking your tit in the baby's mouth or something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. So it means a lot more at that point in time. Now, if it's just during the week, in the middle of the week, and you're sitting there making dinner, and somebody drops off a lasagna, you're like, hey, cool, that's awesome. Stick it over there. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. Big yeah. difference. Makes so, yeah. Big difference. It changes big. with people. It changes with different times of life. It changes yeah. with circumstances. It changes with it the does. type of relationship yep. that it is. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, I, I think it's important to pull back every now and then and kind of reevaluate if you hit the season with kids. Hey, that, was, that's probably going to change some stuff. What yeah. was the name of this author again? Uh, Gary Chapman. Gary Chapman. Doctor Gary Chapman. Doctor Gary Chapman. Yes. Has he has he ever touched anything like this? So he's gonna watch this podcast and be like, I need to write another yeah, book. Right. Uh, hey, I, I all the proceeds like are I going said, to talk about Perkins. Percentage. Like I yeah. said, I fully support this book. Yeah. Okay, I'm tearing into it because this is my intellectual mind pulling at the strings of things right. that are curious to me. 
You know what I mean? So I fully support. I think everybody should read the book I, or listen to the, you know, seminars or something. Go yeah. to a counselor and get learning. I think it's critical, but I don't think it's the everything. No, it is not the Bible that'll save your marriage. It is a tool in being able to save your marriage. What, a, I, what I think the best thing with every relationship to save anything or do anything is just conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, you gotta have the talk. Open conversation and take it like an adult. Yeah. Be an adult about it. Be mature. Don't go wonky. Don't go cattywampus and feel all hurt or offended or yeah. you know, victimized. Just take the conversation and he at steam and just you know, that's if the person telling you is a genuine nice person. I mean if it's just a piece of shit at work trying to run their mouth at you. Yeah. Sorry. But if it's a genuine person then Right. Yeah. 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 So uh brings me to my next point that uh quality time. Yeah. I have an issue with it. Yeah, you don't have enough of it. You don't have enough time to put the quality mm. time out there. You're too busy. It's all of them. <laughs> quality time is all of them except for gifts. And I don't see how you could argue any other way. Quality time is words of affirmation. You have to spend time to talk to them. I could send him a text message. What if, what if you what if you're just like watching a movie? I could send him a text message. You could, you could. You think your wife's gonna be happy not talking to you, and you she just getting text messages? Well, not over a long period of time, no. no. Unless, unless it's, they're not my wife and they're my, you know. Is quality time a gift? Given quality time, is that a gift? Oh, don't. No, that's my. That's literally another question on here. I don't understand how. You're going to yell at me. No. <laughs> I don't. Well, I'm not last. <laughs> no. no it, it bugs me. It, it's not, it genuinely. You keep jumping to my topics before I can get to them. Oh, no, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> it genuinely bugged me because there was a story in the book that literally somebody's presence was a gift at a funeral. Because they haven't seen them in such a long time. It was their spouse. Oh. And I'm sitting there. And I'm going, hold on. This is common sense. This is, he's not I'm, I'm giving lost. them a gift. Okay, so let me give you the story. He showed up at the funeral for his spouse, and that was a gift? Technically. Never saw his spouse before that? Technically, she. So she? The, the man's, oh, uh, somebody, okay. somebody in the man's life that was close to him died. Okay. The wife had a very serious career. She told her boss, I need to go to this funeral. The boss said, no, you could take like maybe an hour or so, go to the funeral, come back. I need you here. Well, she said, up yours. I'm going to the funeral. Oh, yeah. That's my husband. Okay. She went there, and he was so taken back and loved it. And Dr. Gary Chapman said, oh, that's a gift. What? Wouldn't that be acts of service? How that is that a gift? Service. That would be an that act of service. How is that a gift? Because it's, because it's making <clears throat> you being there helps make the funeral easier. That's an act of service. I, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, your presence, unless, unless she's being just a that gift? cool of Listen, a person, that her presence is a gift. I mean, oh, kind of like being on his pockets. Oh, you know what I mean? Kind that is like Mike. His Mike. <laughs> that is Mike. That is Mike. Tell Francisco, you save that. <laughs> uh, <that's funny. laughs> I can't well, believe you know. none of you guys beat me to that. <laughs> Incredible. I'm oh, sorry, I'm not vain like you, sir. <laughs> it's, I'm vain as a joke. <laughs> I have veins. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> yeah boom, boom. All right. So, I don't even know how I was going there. Oh, so mm -hmm. that I think that's an act of service. I really yeah. do because you're helping that person through it, right? I would agree. Yeah. I think it's an act of service. Yeah. We're also listening. Doctors aren't perfect, right? They're just oh, humans. Okay. So, we're also listening to a doctor that says you're. Main love language never changes. Let me just prove that prove that wrong. It's, it's wrong. Right. Yeah. It changes per person, per situation. So you're wrong, doctor. I assume that you're wrong in this matter as well. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I respect your opinion, I, but I, 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 I would, I would have to disagree and say yeah. that you were wrong. I respectfully disagree, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, that's we're challenging the... doctors now. <laughs> that's a word. That's not fun to do. No, <laughs> no. You do it enough, huh? Well, no, I don't try not to. <laughs> <laughs> my job <laughs> right <laughs> but yeah that's all i had to pull up the strings of the book you know i still encourage everybody to read it it's still a great book it gives you such good information mm -hmm. i just think there's some things that aren't addressed. that's all fair enough yeah it's a tool yep. fair enough at the end of the day it's a tool it's another tool like you said at the end of the day it's mm -hmm. use that tool for conversation yeah this has been eye-opening mm-hmm
there's actually a lot that I've, I, I got from this that I'm actually going to be able to, you know, apply to my Good. everyday life. Nice. That's awesome. I applied a lot when I first learned about it, too. Me I've too. known about love languages for a number of years now. With my how, ma- how many years yeah. exactly? <laughs> <laughs> I'd say about four years. About Three, four, four years? years yeah. yeah. That's interesting. And tried to help out a little bit in those areas. I'm not the best at it because I like to hustle here and there. and mm-hmm. um, I like the gym. But otherwise, I try my best. That's your yeah. love language working out. Yeah. Sweating. Uh, sweating. I love yeah. like sweating and smell like a white yeah. onion hose. <laughs> <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> Musk. <laughs> smell like a man. <laughs> oh. uh, uh, you guys got anything else? No, no I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. I think this was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. Thanks a lot. All right. Well, till next time, guys. Sounds good. See you later.